In this video, we're going to go ahead and UV map our simple core set here. So to get started, we'll come over here to the left hand side and just below the perspective outliner that we have here. We're going to go ahead and right click the one just below that and go down to perspective UV editor. With this one selected, we now we have the UV editor in our perspective window, so we can kind of work with both. Go ahead and select the object. And as you can see, our UV map is a complete mess. There's no way we could texture on this, okay? So we got to fix it. So we're going to use a cylindrical map. So we're going to go up to UV, and we're going to look for cylindrical. All right, so I'm going to select cylindrical. Now, if you couldn't see this UV here, it's because you're not set to modeling. So make sure you still have modeling set, and then drop it down, cylindrical map. Now we want to go ahead and try to make this a little straighter. I am not going to worry about it too much. I'm just going to use an unfold 3D. So we're going to right click, go to UV and double click it. And that'll select all this. And we're going to go to polygons. We're going to drop this down. We're going to go to unfold and select the options next to unfold. Now right here, it's going to say method unfold 3D. If you're set to legacy, put it on unfold 3D and set your iterations to five. Five is my magical number. You can also uncheck pack. Okay, we're going to use layout for this when we're ready. So let's go ahead and run this. So I'll go ahead and click apply. It's going to run it. And that looks a lot better. So now that this set up, I'm going to press E on my keyboard, rotate it just a tad bit. And to move around inside the UV texture editor, it is just holding down Alt and your middle mouse button. And you can pan that way, and you can also use your middle mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Those are two you really need to know. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this all up into sort of a perfect rectangle, because right now it's kind of curved. And I want it to be just a perfect rectangle. It'll be easier to texture that way, especially if you're new to texturing. So I'm going to select this one here. This looks like the longest distance and this kind of side is more scrunched. So this is the one I'm going to work with this is the one in the front. So I'm going to line everything up to this width here on this and I don't want those. So I'm going to hold down control and marquee those. So with these selected, I'm going to move these way up. But before I do, I'm also going to line these to the left. And to do that, I'm going to hit this button right here while those are selected. And I'm going to move this way up. Now this may seem weird, but I'm just going to stretch this way up because I want all of these to use the same density or distance as this row here. So I'm going to move them way up to make sure they're above this row where it kind of curves. I'm just moving them way up. Now I'm going to select the one at the very top of that row that we pulled way up. And I'm going to come over here to the opposite side, to the opposite corner. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to double click it. That's going to select all the ones on the top. And I'm going to come up here. I'm going to use this little arrow. It's going to align them all to the highest one, which is that one right there. I'm going to do that with every row. Okay, so now I'm going to zoom in to the next row, click one of them, hold down shift and select the double click the next one next to it. That's going to select that whole row. And then I'm going to line them all up to the highest one, which is, of course, the row that we moved all the way up. So now they're all going to be matching that density. Just keep doing that. Select one, double click. Press G on your keyboard to redo since the last action we did was to line them all up. I'm just going to keep on doing this. All right, so I'll probably speed the video up right here because this takes a second. Okay, and when you get to the last row, don't do that double click thing. I always do that and I'm like, oops, don't do that. Instead, select the one on the far end, which is this one, then go down to this side and double click it. And that way you just get the bottom row. Because if you double click this one, it'll actually go all the way around the entire thing. You just wanted this one. So I'll go ahead and press up on that last row. And here we are, we're looking good. Now I want to line them all up to one of these horizontal rows. All right, and usually it's best to select the one in the center with something like this. So I'll, I'm going to double click this row right here, this cylindrical right here in the center. And I'm just going to pull this one way over to make sure that it is always going to be the farthest one. Probably don't got to go that far, probably right about there. <laughs> and I'll just go ahead and select this top one. I will go down to the bottom one and I will hold down shift and double click it. That way it doesn't go all the way around by, you know, like I did with the bottom. And that'll get this. Now I can push these all over to the right. 
so they will align to the farthest right one. And I'll just go ahead and go down this one and do the same exact thing. Select one, double click the next one, hold down shift, select the next one. And make sure you don't accidentally do this with these selected, then I hold down shift and do it because now I have two rows selected and they'll flatten on each other. Don't accidentally do that. Make sure that the, you always release shift when you select the first one for each row, then hold down shift and double click the next one. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward and go ahead and get these all lined up. And here I am at the end, I'll select the one at the top, go down to the bottom one, double click it. That way it doesn't select them all the way around and line up this last one. So now it is a perfect rectangle. This will be really easy to texture. One of the things we've got to watch out for is where is this texture seam going vertically across the model? So let's go ahead and go to edge, select the top one, go down to the bottom one, double click it. And it's right in the front in the center. That kind of bites, you know, because when we're texturing, that'll that'll be an issue. So what we're going to do is we're going to put them on the sides. And we're actually going to split this in two, front side and back side. And we're just going to go right down one side. Okay, so let's come over here. And we're going to turn on symmetry before we select. So I'm going to press Q on the keyboard. I'm going to go to tool settings. I'm going to drop this down to symmetry and it's still turned on. So we still have object X turned on. So I'm going to select one of these edges and you can see it's selecting the other side. So I can see exactly where I want to split this. So I'm going to go ahead and try to make it right down the side of this thing. Maybe right about here probably looks good. So I'll select one of the edges and the one right above it. I'll just double click and you can see it selected both sides. Now we're going to cut this shell. So to do that, you can see we selected the edges in here too. They're selected. And we're going to come up and we're going to see this little X-Acto knife looking thing. Go ahead and click that. All right. Now I can right click, go to shell and I can grab this. But you can see as I'm trying to select that it, it's grabbing both sides. That's no good. So we need to turn off symmetry. So, so come out of here, get out of shell mode. Just come over here and right click, go to object, press W on your keyboard and scroll down, go to symmetry and just turn off symmetry. There we go. There's no more symmetry. So right click in here now and go to shell. Now we can select just one shell. So I'm just going to move this off and I can see that I want to weld it to this one here, but I need to know which side. So what I'll right click and I'll go to edge and I will double click the one below it and I'll select all these edges. Now I can see which needs welded. So I can right click in here, go to edge and come over and just hit this move and sew the selected edges button. And there it goes. So now we have both our back, and our front are two independent shells. And we can go ahead and pack them inside of this UV space. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll lay out this object. So go ahead and marquee select both the shells. Come up to polygons. Go down to layout and select the options for layout. And what we want to do is go ahead and set the prescale to the object. Should be fine. And we want single or multiple objects, non-overlapping object. Flip reverse, scrolling down, scale mode, uniform, shell stacking shape. Rotate. I don't want these to rotate at all. I want them to stay just like they are. And spacing preset. Go ahead and set this to probably about a 0.4 should be fine. That should be plenty of space for a 2048 by 2048. And go ahead and set this to a 0.4. Should be plenty of spacing. Go ahead and click apply. And that'll shove them inside the 0 to 1 space. And if you want, you could line this up or just leave it where it's at. And this is good. We have enough spacing on the sides, enough spacing in between the UV shells and the bottom. All right, so this is UV map now. So in the next video, we're gonna create a little bit higher poly version of our model that we'll use to bake some detail onto our current model. And it'll also assist us with creating our texture maps. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post below the video and click subscribe to follow us on YouTube.